Again and again we show gamekeepers struggling to conserve Britain's wild places and wildlife against an immovable civil service. Whether it's waders in Hampshire or hen harriers in the North Country, government officials can't grasp simple facts of nature. I don't understand why uh, the curlew and other red-listed species on the moors have to suffer uh, because of, of their uh, inefficiency and ineptness. The new general licences in England, due to start on the 1st of January 2021, are the latest pile of paperwork to prompt anger from shooters. England's Environment Department, DEFRA, now says we can't shoot jackdaws and rooks to protect songbirds. Government scientists dispute evidence such as this photo that they prey on rare birds, threatening species. We can still shoot jackdaws and rooks to prevent crop damage, but the rules say we have to prove crop damage in the first place and show other prevention doesn't work. Every restriction to the general licences pushes pest control into the bureaucratic hellhole that is the individual licence, such as for corvids on or near European protected areas and in most of the UK for all gulls. Hey, Natural England, where's the gull problem? Please tell me. Over two years since BBC TV's Chris Packham and his Wild Justice Group forced Natural England to tighten its rules, civil servants have denied licences to moorland managers who want to protect red and amber-listed birds and to pest controllers clearing gulls from businesses where they are causing damage. Basque says the general licences are here to solve problems, but what started out as a two-page document is now 11 pages and set to get longer in the next few years. There's an important thing here to understand with the general licence. They are, they are there to allow us to control a problem. They're not there to facilitate us going shooting, although we, we like going shooting, we like carrying out um, you know, all manner of gamekeeping activities. What we should be doing as a country is, is to try and get rid of red tape wherever we can on whatever legislation. So that's one of the things that we will do at Basque is to try and push for shorter licences, more concise licences, but also where we need to give members and other people guidance so that they can actually understand what's quite a legal document now. As seen with other government policies in wildlife, anti-sowing confusion appear to be a trend. The Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust thinks some of these problems are solvable. I think we will you know, continue to have issues um, into next year as people get used to the, uh, the new licensing regime. Um, but it, it, for the people that need to apply for, new, for an individual license, um, uh, how effective the system will be will largely depend on um, the capacity that DEFRA and Natural England have to process applications. And clearly, there wasn't sufficient capacity this year. What DEFRA are proposing from January is that all those protected sites come back under the general license um, so you don't actually have to apply for one that's their intention but we still don't know what those conditions will be that those um, people using the licenses need to operate under on those um, protected sites so We've had some information as to what the licensing system will look like next year, but there's still a lot of detail to come out. Where there is a genuine need for somebody control, to control a, a bird, if we're going to call it a pest bird or, or whatever, um, the, license, the licenses should be fairly applied. You know, your application should go in, it should be assessed. If there's a genuine reason, you should get it, rather than any arbitrary limit or decision by somebody else. Will the trend be adding or taking away species from the list continue? You bet. One thing that DEFRA have committed to do is to review these licences every year. So as um, you know, certain uh, pest species increase in number, then there is the opportunity for you know, DEFRA to review um, which species come under general licences and which species don't. So it, it will be an, an evolving process. I think over the next few years with um, you know, changes being made perhaps on, on an annual basis. Perhaps the biggest changes will come after Brexit. I'm no expert on Brexit and I think we're none of us exactly know where we're going even at this late stage. But we're signed up to certain requirements such as the Birds Directive, 
um, which underpins a thing called the Berne Convention, which we as a country will still be signed up to. Um, as we leave the EU, um, uh, the um, wildlife legislation, I think it's inevitable that it will be um, reviewed and you know, potentially changes made, some positive changes and, and some uh, which, which perhaps might not work in our favour in terms of you know, rural land managers. I think it's really important that civil servants listen to people like ourselves who know what's happening in the countryside. That would be nice. However, a glance at the complete list of birds on general licences shows the opposite of joined up government, with only five pest birds shootable across all four parts of the UK. The English government has already added mammals, such as stoats, to its general licences and is thinking of using the licences to allow pheasant releases. Scotland may use individual licences as a way of stopping grouse shooting. It looks like it's all aboard the bureaucracy bus for Britain's bird life.